So here in the PowerShell ISE, I've pasted in that get spuser effective permissions function. Uh, I've saved this as spsecurity.psm1 instead of ps1. Uh, that makes it a script module. So now I'm just going to open my normal PowerShell. Uh, I'm going to see if I can get into my SharePoint server here using PowerShell remoting. Here we go. Uh, I did save that script in the root of its C drive to make it easy to get to. So let's just load that module using import module. Okay, that's there. Now, because I did not start this copy of PowerShell using the SharePoint Management Console shortcut, I, there's no way to do that through remoting, I need to go ahead and load the actual SharePoint stuff. So that's going to be add ps snap in microsoft.sharepoint.powershell. That should load up in just a few seconds. Great. So the first thing is I need to decide what user I want to look at. Uh, let's just do, let's start with company backslash administrator. And get spweb. We'll just get the, the base one here. I'm just going to run that command by itself to make sure that I got something back, and I did. So now that I've got that, I can say get sp user effective permissions, give it the user account I want to check, and I'm just going to export that to a CSV file. And we should have a perms.csv. Now if I didn't want to do that, uh, here's a neat trick, and this is what the author of the function on his blog originally did. We'll just pump it to an out grid view. Oops, can't do out grid view over remote session. Of course, let's just take a look at the results. Okay, so this is showing me that this user has a limited access permission over that resource, which is an SP web, and it was granted by direct assignment. So uh, one of the reasons I put this in a variable is so I can simply change the user, hit the up arrow a few times to pull that back, and run it for a different user. So you can see that you can easily get this into a CSV file, or if you're running it locally, you could pop it up into a grid view, all kinds of stuff. But going through every single securable, I mean, this is just one web. I'd have to do this for every single web, every single list, every single list item. I mean, all that stuff would just take too long, not to mention having to run through it for every single user. So that's when I started to realize that using PowerShell to generate this kind of really comprehensive report, probably not so practical. Uh, PowerShell is probably a great way to just check a particular user, and if you have a need, some auditing need, hey, you know, so-and-so just left the company, we need to figure out what they had permission to, or, or what permission they had on this particular web, this is probably a good technique for that. And it, I think I'm going to keep this function handy just for that purpose, but in terms of producing an entire report, not so much. So in the article, I'll kind of explore what I think the alternatives are. Um, before we do that, let's make sure we close that PS session and close the shell.